I almost never thought the day would come, but NBA 2K finally dropped some news. Rejoice, ladies and gentlemen. It's not gameplay news. It's not even the city news or my team news. It's just news on this new thing they're doing called the seasons. It's something they did last year with my team. They want to expand to include all of the my player game modes and the W this year. They put out this post this morning saying this. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. I almost forgot and you almost forgot. <laughs> Good thing we didn't forget. Scroll down, tap that big red button, subscribe to the channel. And turn on the post notifications, fellas. All right, now that we got that out the way, we can get back to this news. Seasons is expanding in NBA 2K22. Season 1, Call to Ball, will run across my career, my team, and the W starting on 2K Day, September 10th. Look out for new seasons every six weeks featuring new content and rewards that you can unlock at no cost. And they actually drop a roadmap here. And usually, the gamer in you, your dick gets ex excruciatingly hard when you see a roadmap. Because it just means, like, potential. There's potential in the air. But this roadmap here actually doesn't really show much of anything because all this stuff is grayed out. So it's kind of difficult to get excited about what's coming in all these months when it's just blacked out my players in a silhouette. They say play and get rewarded, new season rewards, new XP challenges and agendas, new music and apparel. So let's get into it. I'm going to skim through the article to just kind of provide you the main points because who reads? <laughs> Do you read? <laughs> there was a whole bunch of jibber jabber about how new seasons is gonna transform the way that you play NBA 2K because it's gonna be new content, new animations, new ways to get around the city, new aesthetic things, new XPs and challenges, all part of the seasons in the city. They dropped this here screenshot. If we zoom in oh so carefully, earning XP in my career seasons, play and earn new rewards, how to earn XP, play city and neighborhood games, rec, pro-am, events, and completing quests. So it is a verification that Pro-Am is returning to 2K22. It's a verification that Rec is returning to 2K22 as well. And that so are events. That's nothing game breaking. They drop a bunch of screenshots here of the different things you earn as you level up in different seasons. Um, so you get one hour of double XP, I guess a new backpack, inline skates so you can skate around the city. And if you scroll down, they actually show that you get a go-kart to move around the city at level 40. So I guess for like every 10 or 15 levels, there's gonna be one really interesting one potentially. Oh, it says earn a free reward with every level up. So this is a little different because usually 2K like takes every opportunity to monetize something. This is the first time in a while where 2K gives out something they would consider like a big, thing like a giving out a go-kart or inline skates to move around the city faster is quote unquote a big thing but they're not monetizing it because 2k reminds you over and over again throughout the course of this article that these are free we're thrilled to introduce go-karts as a fun way to cruise and adventure through unexplored regions and will be available once you reach level 40. Each season, a new grand prize will be refreshed and become redeemable. It's just a matter of whether or not you reach the finish line. They also unveil in this article here that if you guys do decide to play on current gen instead of next gen, the first season on current gen is gonna be in the Caribbean. So there's gonna be a lot of Caribbean related quests. There's gonna be beautiful islands in the background while you play basketball. But then they said something interesting, and it was pretty vague, so you can read into it however much you want to, but they said, we've also been busy in the lab reimagining what it means to be a legend, and we think you're gonna like what we've cooked up. The crown jewel for players in NBA 2K22 will be reaching legend status, but Hall of Fame careers aren't built overnight. Think about it, the GOATs didn't earn that title because of one season. So if you have been doing the legend grind before you're reading this and a little unsure on how the f you even qualify to be a legend this year, even though you know that legend is going to be, like most any other year of NBA 2K, the highest status you can reach in the game. They begin talking about less and less important things as the article goes on. They mention that uh, every week there's gonna be a new track that's added to the soundtrack in cooperation with all these, we don't give a f we could just load up Spotify and listen to the greatest hits whenever the f we want to in my preferred rotation. But uh, 2K loves this. They, they even said up and coming and world renowned musicians joining the likes of Doja Cat. Yeah, world, world renowned.
I think nobody really gives a fuck about this except maybe like up and coming artists or producers that are gonna be like submitting their beats and music to try and have a chance at even making it into 2K cause that'd be a pretty big achievement for you in your career, right? So between the fresh apparel, the new animations, the modes of transportation and whatever else they have, the new season seems like a fresh look at what has otherwise been like just reused, rewards over and over again for a lot of different 2Ks. I refuse to get optimistic about it because I don't want to get let down, but I prefer what they're doing now compared to what they've done in the past few years. So I'm open to it. So then they begin talking about my team, which is where they even began the concept first seasons just last year. So we get to the my team part. They're pretty vague about what's going to be available in my team. And that's mainly because 2K dropped on their Twitter the other day saying, hold on, let me get to it. Mark your calendar and be the first to see what's new with these deep dives on all your favorite modes and gameplay additions. And when you click on this photo here, 2K22 upcoming news, this week, all we get is seasons and WNBA news. Next week is when we get the juicy stuff like gameplay in my team. And then we have to wait until a few days before the game launches to get the city, my current, and my NBA news for both current and next gen. They have three days to release all that news so then i responded what a weird way to market a game i'm not even like mad about it i'm just like this is so fucking weird why won't you want to promote a game earlier why, why won't you want to get people to pre-order your game earlier there's no there's no hype associated with the game at all right now i know marcus worked with ea in the past he said you would think but it's very strategic approach to use max conversation and user generated content in two most critical weeks for people to make their buying decisions all while disrupting an important moment for Madden NFL kickoff. I guess that's like, that's one fucking way to look at it. Reality is, is most people do pre-order the game close to release, but if I drop some merch, ladies and gentlemen, and the merch was a month away from being released, I would want you guys to pre-order the merch incredibly expeditiously, my brothers and sisters. I'm, listen, at the end of the day, 2K is the guys who make money. You know what I'm saying? We're just people that play the game. And it's true that NBA 2K21 didn't sell as good as NBA 2K20 did. So maybe they're just trying to switch things up and do something differently. It just feels like a weird way to do it. Not only a weird way to do it but just an, everyone's unhappy waiting we're all just unhappy once you want to appease especially that hardcore community people that actually keep up with the game the way nba 2k marketed their game last year i'll say was one of the biggest what's the word when you do your job so fucking horribly you just missed the mark i don't know what that word is but that's what it was because when you talk to people they didn't even know they included a whole new city on the next gen version of the game people didn't know what was in the game at all and that's because 2k didn't spend any time promoting or talking about it so you need to talk about it as much as possible because especially that casual audience they're not in tune the way y'all in tune watching these videos they they hear one or two hot buzzwords about the game and that's it so you need to try and get in front of those people in my opinion this is just bad marketing i don't have to go to a university program and learn the four p's of in marketing to know that this is not how you tell people what's gonna be in the game anyway all of that to say uh that's the reason why they're being pretty vague about my team right now because they're actually waiting till next week to talk about it and then they get pretty vague about the w but they do drop us a screenshot that shows here on the bronze level you can earn nail polish ladies and gentlemen <laughs> You can get some nail polish for your character and then silver you get seasonal clothing bundles and as you go up I guess the the rewards get better and better when you play the W. NBA 2K21 introduced the W on next gen consoles an all new game mode featuring W NBA and a my player experience adding the W to NBA 2 okay we get it. it's a proud moment. Go toe to toe with opposing my players online and earn new rewards such as VC clothing bundles badges and nail polish ladies and gentlemen yes. Can we get eyelashes next, maybe? <laughs> Hey, ladies and gentlemen, my theory is that 2K is receiving a lot of pressure from the NBA to include the WNBA as part of their product. I don't think this part of the game is, is played much, uh, but I think the reason they have to put emphasis and focus on it is because the NBA wants it to sell it very badly. So anybody associated with the NBA has to do what the NBA says. You need the NBA license. So yeah, maybe it is like a big proud moment. I don't know. But I do think they're receiving pressure from the NBA to promo it more, more, more promo, please, more. But for what it is, I haven't played much of the W in 2K21. I'll give it a shot in 2K22. We'll see how it goes. So that was the article. There was actually a lot of news that dropped the few days prior, but it's not the news y'all thinking about. It's not like news about the game. It's just news about like the dysfunction going around. And you're gonna, what does that mean, agent? Listen to this. So NBA 2K challenged all the NBA players in the world. If you guys ask us for your rating, we will give you your rating. And so players ask, players the likes of Jamal Murray, Canadian's own, <laughs> 
What's my 2K rating? I'm curious to see who y'all got above me. And Ronnie responded, what you think it is, bruh? <laughs> Ronnie, he did what you asked. He asked you to ask for your rating and you said, but what do you think it is though? <laughs> hilarious. And Jamal Murray did not respond to that. Did, did Ronnie eventually give him his rating? Please tell me he did. 85, that injury adds another dimension. Can't wait for your return. What y'all think? Too high or too low? Give it Jamal Murray at 85 knowing that that team had a chance at a championship and they lost it once he got injured is crazy. He needs at least an 88. That's disrespectful almost. So Wale puts out a post saying, man, Ronnie 2K just told me Beal is an 89 in NBA 2K. I demand a recount. Y'all keep playing with my bro, man. So Ronnie 2K quote tweets that asking his famous question, what do you think, Bradley Beal? What do you think? So Bradley Beal answers his question with this gif of himself just like in disarray. Just, man, is, is this what we've gotten to, ladies and gentlemen? Bradley Beal. So obviously, Bradley Beal is unhappy with his rating. MB, the official NBA 2K Twitter account jumps in, says, where is he heading at the end of the year? Hashtag 2K ratings. They keep asking these ambiguous, vague questions out into the world for the fans to answer. And the whole time, the athletes are all just disappointed with their ratings. And I get it. Part of being an athlete is just like overvaluing yourself. You know, you know, when I was in the 10th grade and I was horrible at basketball and I didn't make the second tryout, I thought I deserved to. So I understand why Bradley Beal feels like he deserves to be higher. Actually, I feel like he is rated a little too low considering the Wizards are an atrocity of a team and he's been carrying them for the better part of the last few years. But then things began to get infinitely more interesting because it went from like 2K related drama to just like drama. Bradley Beal's girl posted saying, Ronnie 2K is a whole joke at this point. <laughs> what the fuck, ladies and gentlemen, what the fuck is going on? This has been the most interesting launch in 2K history because Ronnie 2K fucking responded to that saying, hope everyone is having the best weekend except Bradley Beal's wife. <laughs> what? Ronnie, bro. And, and you can't even be mad at Ronnie for doing that. Cause she called him a joke. The least he could do is wish her a bad weekend, man. Hey, just FYI so you don't look dumb online next time, Ronnie doesn't do the ratings. Mike Stauff does the ratings for NBA 2K. Ronnie is like the, the, the face of 2K publicly though, so Mike Stealth is not gonna come out responding to these guys because people don't know who he is. So Ronnie responds because he's the guy that all the athletes follow. He's the person that could actually get re replies from all these athletes, correct? He's verified, correct? As fun as it is to bag on Ronnie, I just thought this was hilarious. Ronnie later deleted that tweet, by the way. So if y'all have been paying attention, you already know what's been going on, but uh, things began to get even more interesting because Mike Wang at 3 a.m., Eastern time at night, ladies and gentlemen, went through like a flurry of different tweets, revealing a lot about NBA 2K21 current and next gen gameplay news. It's the stuff we've been waiting for, man. Man, I was so excited. I woke up in the morning like, thank you, Mike Wang. This is the moment that all NBA 2K players have been waiting for to actually hear about the game. But then the next day, close to like noon, all those tweets were deleted except one. And that was a tweet saying lots of info will be hitting soon. So either the information was incorrect or Mike Wang was not supposed to talk about it. So that sent everybody on a flurry because it's like, damn, we're like two weeks away from the launch. We finally heard news. And you mean to tell us we can't even hear that news? Badge Plug said, nah, they really got Mike Wang hostage. They made him delete all his tweets. Anybody else notice Mike Wang just deleted all his gameplay tweets or am I tripping? Was he wrong or did he release them too early? Joe Knows says, why did Mike Wang delete all those tweets? Cold Man asks, Mike Wang deleted all his tweets. We are doomed. But then we were saved because folks like the NBA 2K Lab dropped a neat little summary about all the news. It goes like this. Current and next gen are more similar on court this year compared to last. So the main change in shooting this year is gonna be a much larger weight towards coverage. Aiming is gone. And they also said that vibration shooting, like when your, vib your control vibrates when it's time to shoot, that shit is gone too. So the people that were using Zens and shit to cheat and hack, uh, good luck, my brothers. You're going to have to try harder this year. You don't have to be as high of a rating as last year to be a perimeter shooting threat. If you have good timing, at least, hopefully that adds a skills gap to shooting. Steady shoot has been removed. The vibrator shot cue has been gone. Turning off the shot meter still gives a boost. 
Dribbling is closer to 20 than 21 control wise. There's going to be new seasonal animation content. The goal is to keep the game fresh all year long and encourage players to use signature moves that they otherwise may not have. My understanding is that once you get the animations, you can keep them though. So even if the next season comes, you can still use the last season's animation. Shots won't be taken away, only added. We're gaining more animations based on the size and ability this year. The plan is to release the same SIG animations on both generations. It's interesting he said like the plan, which means that there's a possibility that, that might not be the case and they're still working towards it oh, like two weeks before the launch. Hmm. New jump shot landings will be added as the man on TikTok leaked a couple weeks ago. And this year, unlike last year, you won't lose 99 overall. So isn't that the most exciting thing you've heard about NBA 2K so far? And that stuff has been removed from the internet now. So that kind of put people in a tailspin and it wasn't until 2K dropped that roadmap of when they're gonna come out with news that people calmed back down. The only reason they originally dropped that is because we was all confused. Everyone thought the game was gonna be delayed or canceled. We didn't know what was coming up because this was so unlike any previous year. I still think that there's a chance this game might get delayed, at least one of the games. But then a developer for NBA 2K, The Czar, put out this tweet I thought was interesting. When you have a channel based on you being good and something changes and you are no longer good and rent needs to be paid, what do you think is gonna happen? I don't know what the f that means, ladies and gentlemen. I can't tell if that's in reference to OnlyFans no longer allowing explicit content or to 2K players falling on and off the game because it changes. Is it like NBA 2K League? Well, I literally don't know, but it's a shot at somebody, man. Hey, fellow 2K content creators out there, please diversify, man. Over the last two years, I realized as much as I love making these 2K videos for y'all, I also want to be doing this for a long time. And if I'm relying on 2K, then it's going to be a very short career for me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know the ups and downs. The game could be horrible. People could lose interest and that has nothing to do with me. So I came out with the number one gaming podcast on the Fucking Planet Peer to Peer Podcast. My reaction channel with Lowe's been blowing up recently, Playback. AMP is averaging almost 1.5 million views per video. That's been like so much fun to do. And I have my second channel where I do more like IRL lifestyle type videos, eating videos, real estate videos, like that. Please do something for yourself that's not 2K. And that's likely gonna mean you're gonna have to hire people to help you on all those other things because there's no way for you to do everything by yourself. But please, he has a good point. Like what's gonna happen when like something changes, a variable changes and now you don't know how to adjust. A lot of people is vulnerable right now and is a position you put yourself in. You put you, you give an opportunity to do something massive, you might as well take advantage of it and cover up all those holes, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's been like the totality of the NBA 2K news so far. I think for any other major news, we're gonna have to wait a week because that's when they plan on talking about gameplay and my team. But 2K, can I just say this? Y'all talking about my career and the city related stuff a day or two before the game launches is dumb. I don't know which one of y'all in the boardroom convinced yourself that's good marketing, but it's just dumb. It makes it look like y'all don't have that much content to talk about. There's not that much exciting to talk about. And I guarantee you, there's gonna be some juicy stuff you could reveal about those things right now that get people amped, that get people to pre-order. I don't know, it just looks like y'all are down bad. This way of releasing news makes it look like y'all don't have much to talk about. And in a year where y'all are releasing a game on current gen, and next gen, I very much struggle to believe that's the case. That's just what it looks like. I'm telling you what it looks like. Y'all should really hire like some consultants. I swear to God, y'all need some outside third party consultants that are like familiar with the sports gaming space because there's so many decisions y'all make that from an outside perspective that's not in the NBA 2K, I work for 2K bubble, y'all don't know what's going on. Like you don't know what your audience is thinking on a day to day. I have a good feeling that that's going on. And it's kind of difficult to see outside your bubble, even me as a content creator sometimes, to see outside my bubble and take a look at my content with fresh eyes is difficult. But it's it would be worth it because Jesus, does this look like a muffled launch to everybody but you. But that's been it for the news, man. If y'all enjoyed, make sure to drop a like. If you haven't already, man, scroll down. You probably just forgot. Hit that big red button, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications. I have all the links to all my other channels in the description. Y'all could check them out if you want to, all right? I drop content on there very frequently as well. So if you guys want to see me outside of NBA 2K, you can do that too. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.